Hello and welcome everyone to this Albion Online Dev Talk. My name is Robin Henkes, I'm the Game Director of Albion Online, and today I want to talk to you about the Lancelot mid-season patch. Before we get into that, however, let's have a quick talk about the Albion Online round table. The round table is a group of selected players that we've turned to for advice and feedback for a long time now, several years actually. Um, the reason why we have this round table is because we as developers spend a lot of our time developing the game rather than playing it. And as players, you often have much better insight than we do into how certain things actually work out in the game, how the game currently plays, what the matter is, and so on. So since the release of the Lancelot update, we have uh, refreshed the membership of the round table and we've been discussing with them what the key issues for uh, hardcore players playing Albion Online um, in the Outlands, doing Guild Warfare, but also other general issues that players playing on Albion Online may have. Um, the result of these discussions, or the first result of these discussions, is the Lancelot mid-season patch. So let's get into that now. The mid-season patch contains a number of interesting features. It contains a respec feature, a complete rebalancing of siphoned energy and battle mounts, uh, the removal of the GVG bonus uh, from siphoning mages, uh, the reduction of the learning point spending threshold from 30% to 20%, the introduction of a GVG training feature, gear soft caps and other changes to Hellgates, as well as various gear changes and balance tweaks. Now let's take a look at those one by one. Probably the most prominent feature of the mid-season patch is the respec feature. The respec feature is intended for players who want to switch to a different set of equipment, maybe because of meta changes or simply because they wanted to try something new and they don't want to start again from the very beginning. So what the respec feature allows you to do is to drain any combat node of progress, you choose a number of levels that you want to drain, then you have to pay a certain amount of silver that is based on the amount uh, and value of fame that you're draining. Uh, and then you get a number of fame credits. And these fame credits, you, you can reinvest into any other combat node. Now, different nodes yield different amounts of fame credits and cost different amount of fame credits based on the type of slots, so weapons are more valuable than helmets, for example. It's also worth mentioning that there is a certain amount of loss involved in this conversion. Only 80% of the fame is retained in this conversion. This makes sure that the feature is not constantly uh, reused uh, over and over to constantly switch equipment, but is used only in cases where you're really sure that you want to make a change. Overall, we think this is a really good addition to Albion Online because it allows players to try out different equipment um, without having to start all the way from the beginning again and, and just make the whole variety of gear more accessible to more players. The second major change coming with the Lancelot mid-season update uh, sorry, mid-season patch, is uh, the rebalancing of the siphoned energy. We took a hard look at what siphoned energy was being used for and we found that really it's mostly being spent on converting into tier 4 relics. Now the original intention of the feature was to make siphoned energy a really good source for higher end relics so uh, this wasn't what we intended at all uh, and we found that the the conversion rates were actually really disconnected with the prices of relics on the marketplace we ended up deciding to drastically rebalance the conversion rates to make them competitive with with other sources for relics um, so the result should be that you are now you now have a, a competitive conversion rate of uh, energy into higher end relics and should generally strengthen the value of siphoned energy. In addition, we also took a look at um, the siphoned energy cost of battle mounts. Uh, during the recent reset days, we saw almost no battle mounts in use 
which is uh, not what we intended. We wanted to see these in, in massive ZVZ fights to be used as you know, the, 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 the highlights and small buffs that those large groups still employ. So uh, we decided to rebalance battle mounts in two ways. Once, uh, one, we improved their usability by giving them a slightly higher mobility, allowing them to keep up with Zergs uh, while outside of battle uh, situations using a gallop mode. And we also slightly improved their, their combat mobility in some cases. Additionally, we drastically rebalanced their cost as well. So they should be now much more competitive um, to use. They're still very, very expensive but not nearly as expensive as they were before. The result should be that we should see them uh, employed in larger ZVZ fights. Um, obviously for all of you who did buy battle mounts before this change, you're now thinking, well, I spent a lot of energy on those and now they're becoming a lot cheaper. Worry not, you can convert, convert your old battle mounts back into the original amount of energy that you did spend on it and then you can buy new battle mounts at a cheaper rate now. The, these changes together should really uh, ensure that siphoned energy has a stable value and actually potentially rises in value, which is um, a key goal of ours to make raiding siphoned mages and control of siphoned mages a valuable activity. An additional change we're making to the siphoning mages um, is the removal of the GBG bonus that they give uh, for control. So with uh, the introduction of the Lancelot update, we introduced a feature that uh, gave a small battle bonus to the guild that controlled the siphoning mages in the hour leading up to the GBG fight. This feature was intended to allow more players to meaningfully contribute to guild warfare, to, to, to have an impact of the, on the outcome of a battle. Um, unfortunately, a lot of you felt that this feature actually added a chore instead of uh, a meaningful activity. And uh, therefore we are removing this feature with the introduction of the Lancelot mid-season patch. However, we do remain committed to our goal of getting more players involved in, in meaningfully contributing to guild conflicts, to, to, to the success of their guild. We will simply have to find a different way. The next change I want to talk about is the reduction of the learning point spending threshold from 30% to 20%. So with the mid-season patch, we're lowering, lowering that threshold when you can spend LP uh, to the 20% threshold, which should enable the players who have built up large amount of LP or who are returning players to, uh, to spend their LP more quickly, to catch up more quickly. Um, we've made sure that the amount of LP that you have to spend remains the same. So basically at, at the 30% threshold, you still have to spend the same amount of learning points, which means that at the 20% threshold, you now have to spend more learning points. This should ensure that uh, this remains entirely fair. Nobody has to spend more learning points. You only have the opportunity to do so earlier now. Um, this should have apart from the ability to catch up more quickly if you have a lot of learning points built up, should not have an impact on leveling itself. It will, however, have a slight impact on uh, beginning players because obviously if you do always spend at the 20% threshold, you will run into uh, a point where you have no learning points left more early. This is why we decided to increase the starting amount of LP for all players uh, slightly. Uh, and, and to ensure that our veteran players are not at a disadvantage from this, we are also giving the same amount to all players. Next, I want to talk about the GBG training feature. One of the key concerns of a lot of players when discussing the fairness of GBG fights is the skill gap 
that you have to bridge to defeat the old and established players. A lot of these players have experience that reaches back to betas, so it's really, really hard to catch up with, uh, with all that they've learned. And we hope to bridge that skill gap with the introduction of the training feature. The training feature is initially just a console command that you can use to invite two teams of players to a friendly GVG match that takes place in an instanced arena-like um, environment. It has no consequences, but it does allow you to, to try out builds and try strategies to defeat your opponents. Um, there are initially different types of GVG maps available, but, but initially it's just the uh, knockout type of GVG. There will be no support for, for loot initially. However, we do hope to build this feature up in the long run um, into something that you can actually initialize through a UI from the Arena Master with different settings and that you can then actually use to, to run your own events, tournaments, things like that. We're very interested in your feedback. We think this is a really cool addition to, to, to learn how to play GVG fights and we are very interested in your success with it. Also in this patch are a number of changes to Hellgates. Um, in particular, we've introduced a item power limit or item power soft cap rather to the black zone and red zone Hellgates. Uh, any item power beyond 1000 points of item power will be scaled down by 50% in these Hellgates from now on. That means that uh, basically gear or specializations that push you beyond that point will be half as valuable as they were before. Um, that means the gear obviously still gives you an advantage, but the advantage is smaller and that should enable more people to compete in this context where gear is so important so that um, yeah, basically you can compete with slightly cheaper gear and that should allow more people to just participate and it should also make it possible to be more profitable because obviously the rewards of the Hellgate don't scale with the gear used and if the Hellgates get played at the top end gear level then it is actually not really profitable uh, for, uh, for all involved parties if your win rate is roughly 50%. Um, at the same time as we're introducing this change, we're making another change and that is that the uh, yellow zone 5 versus 5 Hellgates, so the, those greater Hellgates that you can find in yellow zones, uh, will be switched from using the yellow zone rule set to using a uh, full loot PvP rule set. Um, there are, at the same time, we are keeping the relatively harsh soft cap on these uh, Hellgates. They are using the same setup that the Arena is using, which is um, from 800 item power, all remaining item power beyond that will be scaled down by 80%. So gear um, has very little impact beyond that point. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because we feel with the arena, we have a uh, knockdown rule, five versus five battleground, where you can try out um, these sort of fights, in particular with the introduction of the GVG training feature. But a lot of our players want a full loot experience that isn't played with the highest end gear. And this is what we're introducing this way. Um, Basically, you should be able to compete in a full loot scenario here with relatively cheap and accessible gear. Finally, this patch also includes a number of balancing changes to equipment. These changes are primarily aimed at buffing underuse items. You can find the details about this in the patch notes. And that is it. That is the Lancelot mid-season patch, which will release on May 2nd, 2018 but we've also been working on other things. As you've heard, we've worked on a, we're working on a Steam release and we've begun the production of the next content update for Albion Online, which will be focusing on strengthening the royal cities. Stay tuned for more infos about that coming soon in the next Albion Online Dev Talk.